Over the years, I've seen a lot of businesses come and go. A whopping 60% of businesses fail within the first three years, and the top four reasons given are 38% ran out of cash or failed to raise enough capital, 35% failed because there was no market need, 20% say they failed because they were outcompeted, and 19% said they had a flawed business model. Well, all of those mean you had a flawed business model. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you why it's so important to know your numbers. I'll give you some tips for cash flow forecasting, and I'm gonna share our personal story where we nearly opened a coffee shop until we decided that it would be a very bad idea. So about 15 years ago, I started putting plans into motion to leave the world of corporate IT infrastructure. I'd been working in the world of IT for about 17 years and I just felt it was time to move on. So there was a few things kind of on the back burner that I wanted to do, but one of the things that me and Mrs. Mack were kind of brainstormed a few ideas and things, and one of the things we came up with was opening a coffee shop. Now, it wasn't just going to be a coffee shop, it was going to be a coffee shop and something else that I can't really go into on this video. Maybe we'll save that for another day. But a core part of the business income was going to be from selling cups of coffee. We got really excited about it. We went to see loads of different premises, we put together a full business plan, we kind of had a vague idea of how we we're going to finance it. We even bought the domain name for the business. I've still got it. It was all very exciting, but I'd worked for long enough with commercial P&Ls and cash flows to know that we had to have a deeper dive into the finances and it was when we did that that we realised hmm, this isn't going to really work out. Now at the time you have to bear in mind that back then it was quite difficult to find this sort of information out. Facebook had only just been invented, YouTube was still pretty much in its infancy and if you googled how much does a coffee shop make you'd get very limited results. So we decided to carry out our own market research. We literally went and visited loads of coffee shops and we just sat there for hours and hours counting how many people were coming in and going out trying to work out roughly how many customers per hour they were getting we tried to even get an idea of how much the customers were spending but that was a little bit more difficult but we logged all of that information into a spreadsheet we went through it all with a fine tooth comb and we very quickly came to the conclusion that our entire business model was fundamentally flawed and here is that actual spreadsheet and now I've got to be honest obviously when we first did this it didn't look like this it was very rough and ready but all of the calculations are more or less the same. We've just tarted this up a bit to make it look a bit nicer for you guys. So I'll quickly give you a guided tour of what's going on and what our objective is here. So we've got a daily sales estimate sheet. This is to give us an idea of how much the shop can potentially make every day. We've then got a staffing cost estimate sheet to work out, well, obviously, how much the staff are going to cost. And then, of course, we've got the most important part, the cash flow forecast. And this is effectively split up into income at the top, so cash inflows. And then if I just scroll down a bit, we've got cash outflows at the bottom. And then we're looking at net movement. Net movement is effectively how much cash we're making each month. And then what that allows us to do is tie that into an opening and closing balance. I'll come on to that in a bit because you do need to take some of these figures with a bit of a pinch of salt, but you'll get the idea. It'll all start to make sense. Don't panic. It's not as complicated as it looks. But to get started, we're going to head over to the daily sales estimate. And by the way, if you're a member of the site, you can download this spreadsheet and play around with it to your heart's content. By default, the cells are protected, but to unprotect the cells in LibreOffice Calc that I'm using here, you just go to Tools and Protect Sheet, and that switches the protection off, and then you can click anywhere. So I'm actually gonna change the title of this, Coffee Shop Example. Anyway, I'm just gonna quickly fill in here what we're actually gonna be selling. So obviously we're gonna be selling cups of coffee We'll probably sell uh, soft drinks like bottles of water and juice and things like that. I think we'll also have a smoothie machine. And obviously, if you're buying a cup of coffee, you're going to want some pastries and things like that to go with it and cakes and all sorts of other stuff that you normally buy from coffee shops. 
We're then going to take a rough stab at how many units of each of these we're going to sell per day. And this comes back to the market research that we were talking about before. I'm going to quickly pop the figures in 100 cups of coffee, 40 soft drinks, 40 smoothies and 40 pastries. I honestly have no idea for these, but the cups of coffee, I think we can be that that's quite a pessimistic number to be honest i think we'll probably be closer to maybe 150 but bear in mind this is a brand new business we're not going to start off on day one with selling the full quota of coffee i think maybe we'll be lucky if we sell 10 or 20 cups a day until the business gets established but for the minute we'll keep it at 100 cups a day and we'll see how that goes then in the unit price column this is our unit sales price exclusive of VAT. So in other words, if we're wanting to sell a cup of coffee for three pounds, it's two pound 50 X VAT. And you can see the VAT column will automatically calculate. It's just doing it to 20% at the minute, but obviously you can change that in the formula if you need to. I'll just fill in the rest of these quickly. And then we'll come to our direct costs. In other words, how much does it cost to make a cup of coffee? Well, I can tell you, that it probably costs in the region of 20 pence in terms of raw materials. So in terms of the coffee beans, milk, sugar, all that sort of stuff. Soft drinks, I think we'll be lucky if we manage to buy them in for any less than about 80 pence per drink. Smoothies will say that they cost us 75 pence each. I honestly have no idea. And pastries will say they are going to cost roughly 50 pence each. Now, one of the things you're probably wondering is how did we get to some of these figures? So I'm going to take you through that in a minute and I'm going to add some notes and assumptions down the bottom here, just as a bit of a reminder. So a lot of this information simply wasn't available back when we were looking at doing our project, but now there's a huge amount of information out there on the internet for all sorts of different industries. And just by doing a bit of Google searching, I found out, for example, that according to Project Cafe UK 2021, the average revenue per coffee shop was £334,000. There was a separate bit of research I found from BizDAC, and that suggested an average turnover of 100000 to 150000 per shop with only 12% of coffee shops making over a quarter of a million pounds per year. A few other things that we will touch on as well, apparently a coffee shop manager has an average salary of 33,000 pounds. So if you're gonna have to pay someone to come and manage the shop for you, then expect to pay around that kind of figure. Obviously more in London. We also found that Limini Coffee suggests a typical receipt value of £4.50. St Martin's Coffee Roasters suggested that you needed to aim for a gross margin of around 75%. So in other words, whatever you buy for £1, you need to be selling it for £4. And then in terms of how we worked out that 20 pence per cup thing, well, bulk buying coffee beans, it's about £629 for 60 kilos. That's £10.50 per kilo. That works out at a direct cost of about 8 pence per cup. And then you've got the cost of the cup itself, which ironically is also around 8 pence per cup from what I could work out. So you're up to 16 pence per cup and then also including a little bit for things like milk and stuff like that. So I think 20 pence per cup is quite a reasonable estimate of the direct costs. And then some other resources down here as well how many rest breaks you need to give workers, weekly working hours. We're gonna to touch on all of that very shortly. So I've just copied and pasted that in for reference down at the bottom here. It's quite useful as you come across little bits of information like that, keep a note of it because later down the line, you're gonna wonder where you got the information from. I would also suggest whenever you find useful information like this, you bookmark it in your web browser. Anyway, we'll just scroll up to the right here and I'll zoom in a little bit just so we can fill all this information in. So working days per week and working days per year. Well, I want this shop to be open every day, but we're also going to be realistic that we're probably not going to be open on things like Christmas day, boxing day. So we're going to allow for five full closure days per year. So that obviously means our working days per week are seven and our working days per year are 360. Then in terms of working hours, well, let's say through the week, we're gonna try and be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
but then to try and keep the costs under control a little bit at the weekend will not be open quite as long we'll say a slightly later start 10 a.m to 6 p.m and then on a sunday we'll say 10 a.m to 4 p.m so that's 12 hours per day through the week eight hours on a saturday and six hours on a sunday remember these are just our sales hours you're probably going to have to have someone in the store before the shop actually opens just to get everything ready get everything switched on you don't want to be turning up at eight o'clock and there being a queue of customers down the street because you're going to get very harassed so from putting all of that initial information in we've got this kind of summary of what's going on down the bottom here and this is just a really quick at a glance view to make sure that you're vaguely realistic with things so let's start by looking at the unit sales per week so all of that is is this total number here so we know we're selling 100 cups of coffee 40 soft drinks smoothies pastries so that comes to 220 things per day that we're aiming to sell so you can see over on the right here units per day 220 that's 1540 units per week now that doesn't mean very much what starts to become a little bit more understandable is how many are you going to be selling every hour so it's 20.8 units every hour or 1.73 every five minutes so for every five minutes that ticks by you should have sold nearly two cups of coffee or maybe one cup of coffee and a, a smoothie or whatever but the key thing here is so for example on units per hour 20 things per hour if you have a quiet moment where for a whole hour no one's come into the shop and you haven't sold 20 things well in your next hour you're going to have to make up for that you're going to have to sell the 20 that you should have sold in the previous hour plus the 20 that you need to sell for that hour so that ends up being 40 if you have two hours quiet then in your third hour you're going to have to sell 60 cups of coffee in a single hour to catch up if you have a slow day where you only sell 50 cups then the next day you're going to have to sell an extra 170 cups so that would be 390 cups total just to make up for the shortfall from your quiet day a lot of people just ignore their quiet days and pretend they didn't happen but you've got to make that money back somehow otherwise your numbers aren't going to work out so then finally at the bottom here here's our turnover figures and this works out slightly different from the figures up here because this is just your daily sales estimate but you're not necessarily open every day if you're only open for maybe 200 days a year then your average of how much you're going to make per day is going to be much much lower so that's why we're saying we were going to be making 506 pound 80 per day but because we're only open 360 days per year it actually works out at 499 pound 86 per day don't worry about that too much for the minute the key thing that we're looking at here is a turnover figure 182,448 pounds and that's if every single day you manage to sell 220 units and interestingly that kind of works us out kind of slap bang in the middle between this optimistic number of 334,000 per year and the slightly more realistic number of 100 to 150,000 per year personally I would say that's over optimistic for your first year when it's not an established business no one's heard of you you're not going to be making 182,000 in your first year just forget it so what you could do is you could put your prices up well that's not going to work if it's just going to make you non-competitive there's not a lot you can do about the direct costs they're going to be pretty fixed so really your only room for adjustment is to change how many units per day you are selling but let's keep it at around this figure for the moment so that figure there the 15,204 has automatically fed into the cash flow sheet at the top left corner here now again what I would suggest that you do in a more realistic kind of environment is that you unprotect this sheet and you start to build things up you're not going to get 15,204 pounds per month from day one you're going to have to ramp it up you're going to have busy periods you might have a seasonal business where it's busy in the summer quiet in the winter etc but for the sake of simplicity all we've done is we've taken that um, 15,204 and we're applying it right across the board we're saying that's what we're going to aim to make every single month 
We've just rounded the average daily revenue to £500. Again, everything that's in grey in this automatically calculates, but the, the white boxes, I hope you can see the difference on the screen. The white boxes is where you type your own information in. We're going to fill out all of our direct costs very shortly because that's going to throw a spanner in the works for the whole business. Again, direct costs, gross profit, gross margin. That's all automatically populated itself. And you can see we're hitting a gross margin of 80%, which is really good because remember what we found out earlier, we were aiming for a gross margin of 75%. So you know that we're kind of on track, we're above that, which is great. But we now need to look at all of our cash outflows. And you can see straight away the direct costs have fed into this number at the top here. But we need to cater for things like rent, rates, and all that sort of stuff that is just part and parcel with running a business. So I've just copied and pasted a few numbers into here and believe it or not, yeah, you're going to be looking probably 3,000, maybe more depending on where you are in the UK, 3,000 pound a month on rent. All of these numbers are XVAT, by the way, you are almost certainly going to need to be back registered and that means you're going to be adding the 20% onto your sales and then you should be able to offset most of the VAT of your running costs against that. We're not catering for taxes in this spreadsheet at all though, because that suddenly gets very complicated very quickly. But just to put things into perspective, we did a lot of research looking at different premises. One of the kind of shopping centre units that we were looking at worked out at £61,200 per year, including VAT and service charges. So three grand a month, yeah, I don't think that's unrealistic or particularly pessimistic. And then obviously you're going to have things like business rates, insurance, utilities. Now utilities could be a big one. And again, I've just taken a rough guess of 500 pounds a month. In fact, I heard of one and I can't verify this unfortunately because it's kind of word of mouth, but they were saying that they were on a fixed rate deal for the utilities and that fixed rate deal was coming to an end. And when it went on the variable deal or whatever, it was going to cost them £20,000 a month for gas and electric for their restaurant. So, I mean, clearly that's just not viable. Anyway, I seriously hope we can get by on £500 per month. Marketing, I mean, you're going to have to do a certain amount of marketing. So we'll allow £100 a month. Website and just web hosting and all that sort of thing, we'll say £100 a month. A little bit for transport, obviously you're going to be driving around and collecting materials and stuff like that, so we'll allow £100 a month for that. Postage, I don't know how much stuff you're going to be posting out, probably not very much. Um, music licenses, if you want to have music playing in your coffee shop, you're going to have to have uh, a license for that. As far as I'm aware, that's around £30 per month, but you'll need to do some digging on that one. Professional fees, accountancy, uh, legal fees, stuff like that. Let's allow £200 a month for that. And then we'll assume, actually, cleaning fees, £100 a month. That's very, very optimistic. I think I was kind of assuming that we were just buying our own cleaning materials and cleaning the shop ourselves at this point. I think if you had to pay someone to come in, clean the shop, clean the toilets and all that sort of thing, then you're going to have to have that done at least once a night. If you haven't got time to do it yourself, I think you could easily be spending £800 a month on cleaning fees, I would guess. And then we've got the biggie, which is staffing costs. So let's head to the staffing costs spreadsheet and we'll fill that bit in. So again, I'm just going to copy and paste a few numbers into this. We're going to say that you're going to need a business manager. I mean, that might be you, but you still need to be paid. But um, let's say you need a business manager. We've already checked on our little bit of market research that that's probably going to cost you about £33,000 a year. We'll also allow for a deputy manager because obviously this person can't be working 360 days per year and they can't be working for 74 hours per week. So let's say really optimistically that we're going to get by with three members of staff. So a business manager, a deputy manager who is going to be around effectively, I mean, you're going to have overlapping roles here, but the business manager is going to be on holiday and there's going to be times off sick and stuff like that. So you need someone who's relatively senior, who can keep the shop running when the business manager isn't around. We're going to hope that we can find that person for £19,200 a year. Again, that might be optimistic. And then you're also going to need a shop assistant, at least one shop assistant, I would have said maybe two. It's going to be a tricky rotor to sort this out. Let's optimistically say we can get by with one shop assistant so that when your business manager 
is around, well, as I say, they can't be working 14 hours a day. So you're going to have to have someone there at other times, not necessarily the deputy manager, because as I say, you need to allow for holidays and all that sort of thing. So we'll say a shop assistant, it might be a couple of part-time people or whatever, but we'll guess at um, 15 grand a year. In terms of employers and I, that actually gets a little bit complicated. So there's a link down the bottom here where uh, HMRC provide a calculator for employers NI and you can just go in there, type the salary in. I've already worked these figures out. So that's the employers NI contribution. And then pensions and things like that. You do need to offer a workplace pension um, once the company gets to a certain size, whether or not you're gonna offer a pension as standard just as a perk to get people, or most employees will probably expect some form of pension to be provided. So I'm just allowing a 3% monthly contribution from the employer. So that means if someone earns 33,000 pound a year, they're actually costing you 37,288 pounds and 80 pence per year. So just scrolling down the bottom, our staff bill is 67,200 pound a year, but the actual staff bill, what it's actually costing you to pay your members of staff, that figure, has automatically fed into the cash flow spreadsheet and oh dear, things have turned red very quickly. So the staffing figure has dropped into this cell here. So that puts our total expenses at 15,647. What are you gonna do? You're gonna have to make more sales. That's the only thing you can do. You can either put your prices up. Um, there's not a lot you can do here to bring your outgoings down. You can look for a cheaper unit. I mean, you can do things like obviously going for a mobile coffee van, stuff like that. We'll talk about that later on. But if you want a high street coffee shop in a shopping center, I don't think these figures are unrealistic. So our bank balance is just going down and down and down and down. If we started off with no money, well, we've ended up with negative 3,156 pounds. And as I say, that's not catering for VAT and taxes and all that side of things. Remember, VAT, if you're VAT registered, that's probably going to come out quarterly. So that's going to be another quarterly hit. But obviously, you're going to be able to offset some things against your expenses. So yeah, you might be okay. But as I say, this spreadsheet isn't taking taxes into account at all but you have got a really quick rough and ready idea of whether or not this business is going to be viable and that's taken me less than what half an hour to type the numbers all into this spreadsheet and we can quickly see mm, yeah this is going to need some thought so needless to say we reluctantly had to walk away from this business idea and come up with an entirely different plan once you cater for the capital costs of setting the business up in the first place plus being tied into a business lease. I think if we'd persevered with the whole thing and we hadn't worked the numbers out properly, within about three years, we would have been a hundred thousand pounds in the red. Bear in mind, once you've signed up to a business lease, you can't just leave because things aren't working out. You're contracted to pay your business rent for the period of the tenancy, unless you've got a break clause. Generally on something like this, you would probably negotiate maybe a break clause after one year, but you know what it's like. When things are kind of up and running and you get into that one year mark very, very quickly, would you really want to jack everything in at that point? You'd probably just go past the break clause and keep things going. And if at that point you're into a three or five or even a 10 year lease, they're often impossible to get out of unless you pay the landlord the full value of that lease for the period of time that you would have been in the property. Some landlords will let you negotiate a discounted payout to get out of the lease, but to be honest, in my experience, that's pretty rare. They don't particularly care. Often they're big conglomerates, they have huge legal teams and they will just bleed you dry. Oh, and even if you were through a limited company, you would probably have had to have put yourself up as a personal guarantor, which means that your house is on the line and everything. It all gets very, very messy. One of the more expensive properties that we were looking at in a shopping center, it had a five year lease with a one year break clause. So if we didn't activate that break clause at the correct moment in time, we would have been contracted to over a quarter of a million pounds worth of rent and service charges. The sad thing is this happens all the time. You come up with what you think is an amazing business idea that no one's ever thought of before. And there's normally a reason for that, by the way. And you know, your emotions take over. It's a natural thing. 
Before you know it, you've spent your life savings or your retirement nest egg. Things start to get very stressful, so you make bad decisions and you feel like you've invested too much to quit. So you just keep going, losing more and more money and eventually things go the inevitable way, unfortunately. It's all very well taking risks, but don't let your heart run your head. Successful business owners are successful because they know when it's time to walk away. And knowing when to walk away is rarely an emotional decision. They've run the numbers. They know exactly what they're doing. I don't know a single business owner who isn't good with spreadsheets. The spreadsheet I've shown you today gets known as a cash flow forecast, and it's an essential tool in the running of any business, big or small. You can download the actual spreadsheet that I've been using in this video from the members area of the Small Business Toolbox website, link in the description below. And while you're over there, you'll find a whole load of extra downloads to help you get your business off the ground. It's kind of everything that I've learned over the years and I've just brain dumped it onto this one website so that I can share it with you guys. In terms of our coffee shop idea, don't give up on good ideas. You know, there's a lot of things that we could have done to make that business viable. One of the key things is not signing up to a great big long business lease. A lot of these business units, in shopping centers especially, that try to entice you in, you know these premises are generally owned by massive conglomerates and they don't care whether your business succeeds or fails. They very rarely negotiate on price because they don't make that much from the rent anyway. It's the property going up in value that they care about. So a lot of these shopping center owners are quite happy to just leave the units empty until someone comes along who's daft enough to sign up to their crazy lease terms. So what could we have done? Well, I think if we were really committed to the idea of opening a coffee shop, what I would be tempted to do is buy a little coffee van, like a mobile coffee van, maybe a couple of them, and try to go to events and things like that, because then you are going exactly to where the customers are in a concentrated kind of period of time in a concentrated area where everyone is, you know, it's a, it's a seller's market. No one's got anywhere else to go at a lot of these events. So they're gonna to come to you for coffee. And I know people doing the mobile vans who are making an absolute fortune. And then what they're doing is they're investing that money, they're saving it up to buy commercial premises to open a coffee shop. And then they can still live out the dream of owning a cafe or whatever. But you know, if you wanna do it for the money, just stick with the mobile van idea but i know a lot of people want to just have the kind of lifestyle business thing of maybe owning a cafe or some sort of boutique you know jewelry shops clothing shops all this sort of thing you've got to run the numbers don't sign up to these insane leases that the big companies are putting out there because as i say they're just waiting for someone daft enough to come along and you don't want that to be you of course the other big benefit of doing it as a mobile business is that you're not committed to being open for 74 hours a week you can just be open when the customers are there and then when it gets quiet you can just drive off somewhere else but anyway that wouldn't have fitted with our original kind of business plan idea so the whole thing had to be knocked on the head Anyway, I hope that's been useful. Please let me know in the comments down below what sort of business ideas have you guys had? Maybe you've had ideas that you thought were really, really potentially profitable, but then you've gone through the numbers and realized it would have been an absolute disaster. Please do share it because we all learn from this sort of stuff. And perhaps on the flip side, maybe you've got a good news story of where you've worked out the numbers and thought it wouldn't be successful but then it turned out that everything worked out absolutely fine in the end so yeah share all of that down below best of luck on your small business journey and we shall see you next time tatty bye